Okay, so now we will go into the costs of inventory. We have seen already holding cost. There are four other types of costs. Holding cost is one of the five types of costs. You can see that in this drawing. The stock of inventory is kept in the center. Inventory is replenished when we order for inventory from the supplier. Our inventory gets replenished. I gave you the example of a kitchen and buying rice for the kitchen. So inventory can be replenished in a company, in a factory by purchasing from a supplier or by internal production from another unit in the same factory. Okay, so units in the factory, uh, a factory typically consists of a large number of units, each having their own machines and lines of production. So a, a given unit is the supplier for another unit. And a given unit can be a customer of another unit within the same factory. So internal production also is a way of replenishing inventory. Okay, for example, in your kitchen, if you make jam, let's say in-house, then instead of buying, say, apple jam from outside, you know how to make jam. So you may make jam in your own kitchen and then stock it for consumption over the next month or so. Okay, so when we make something in the kitchen, then we are doing internal production for stocking in the house, in the kitchen, and then consuming over time. Okay, so on the one side, we have replenishment, and replenishment has these kinds of costs associated with it. There is something called setup cost. Setup cost or changeover cost is the cost when we have to produce internally and it's a time required to change between one product and another product when we are producing different products in the same facility. Ordering cost is incurred when we are not producing inside but when we are ordering from outside. Okay, for example, the, 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 all the effort required in acquiring the item uh, from a supplier, the first of, the, first of those things is the is the process of ordering. In, in most large organizations, uh, there is a whole purchase department. So the purchase department has a whole vendor management system by which it identifies the, the hundreds and probably thousands of vendors that it acquires its materials from. So all the costs associated with doing this purchase management, having a procurement department, you know, keeping track of in, uh, vendors, conducting the bidding processes, uh, you know, all that, whatever is involved in preparing an order and placing an order and acquiring the item, all that comes under ordering cost. So ordering cost will be present when there is no setup cost. Similarly, setup cost will be present when there is no ordering cost. These two, they are alternates for each other. The third item listed there is called volume cost. And volume cost you can think of as the cost that is incurred when you buy in small volumes. Or you can say the discounts that are foregone when you buy in small volumes. If when we buy larger quantities, suppliers give us discounts. When suppliers give us discounts, we save that money. And that money which is saved uh, is the opposite of this cost. The cost is the money that not saved by ordering in smaller volumes. Okay, that's called volume cost. We've already seen what holding cost means. Now on the outflow side, on the demand side also, there is a cost and we just discussed these terms, stock out and back ordering. So stock out and back ordering also have associated costs with them. Okay, demand can be independent demand or dependent demand. I'll give you uh, examples of what they mean. Let's say that uh, from the point of view of a, a person a retailing uh, an, an item like say the mobile phone. Now this, the, the demand for the mobile phone is called independent demand. Okay, so people come to a retail store, they buy the mobile phone and then they just go away. So there's this SKU of mobile phone kept there and the SKU is bought and that demand is called independent demand. But now imagine the producer of this mobile phone. This mobile phone is made up of a large number of components and parts, subcomponents and parts. Now the people who are producing this in the factory which is producing all those components and parts, now those parts are dependent on each other and they are dependent on the end phone which comes. So if I, for example, purchase, uh, if, if I have a demand for 1000 units of this mobile phone in a month, then that means that a corresponding demand is placed upon all the parts and components which go into the mobile phone. For example, in this mobile phone, there could be certain types of small micro screws 
which are used to hold the components in place. And let's imagine that there are 10 micro screws, 10 small screws used inside this mobile phone of a particular size. So if 1000 units of this mobile phone are demanded in a month, then the demand for those small screws would be 10,000, right? That's called dependent demand. The demand, the demand for those small screws is dependent on the demand for the mobile phone. So both dependent and independent demand uh, leads to costs and the, the demand side costs are the stock out cost and the back ordering cost. In this slide, I have explained again what these costs mean. Please go through them. You can pause this video for a moment to reflect on these costs if you wish to. You can see the units of these costs, the units in which we express these costs. Holding cost is expressed as per unit per time, per unit of item that is being held in stock with time per time, per unit time. Ordering cost is per order. Each time we place an order, we incur a certain ordering cost. The setup cost is the cost of setting up. So each time it is set up, it is incurred. Volume related cost or discount is the per unit cost. And stock order and back, back ordering cost are also expressed as per unit per time. So this should be corrected here. It should be per unit per time. Let me make that correction right now. This is incorrect. It should be per unit per time. Okay, so summarizing all the discussion that we've had so far, inventory is a burden that we cannot do without. So hence inventory needs to be managed. This is why inventory management is a big topic. And you can think that of all the topics in operations management, inventory along with process analysis is, a, is, is probably the most important. Inventory and process analysis are probably the most important topics, the two most important topics in operations management. So managing inventory essentially boils down to managing the money associated with it. For a business organization, money is the key criterion for performance. So making money or increasing the amount of profit earned is the objective or the goal. And therefore managing inventory essentially is managing the money that we can associate or, or the costs associated with inventory. 